This is the Manchester Football Social. Good evening, this is XS Manchester. Welcome to the Football Social. Now, if you're expecting to hear Forever Blue, which is on every Tuesday, we can tell you you won't be getting that today because obviously Manchester City are in action right now. I want to bring in our guests. The lovely Steve Shanyaski. Hello, Steve. Hello. Hello, Johnny, as well, for the first time. Johnny is joining us. Uh, you're going to be here with us for Johnny Sharple. Sorry, I didn't even say your second name. Oh, are that's... you okay, Johnny? I'm grand, thank you. How are you, Joe? I'm very well. An hour of chat with us, with Manchester City on in the background. Updates yeah. will be coming as we know them. And this is the first update for you with Mr. Ian Cheeseman, who is live at the ground. Right, so we've got Ian Cheeseman on the phone. If you can't hear, we've gone over to Hoffenheim. Ian Cheeseman, you can tell us something right now that a lot of people didn't expect to hear. Uh, we're about five minutes in. What is going on at uh, Manchester City against Hoffenheim? Just over three minutes gone, actually, Joe, and City are already a goal down. Uh, the goal came from, I suppose, City being caught napping at the back, really, because they just seem to waltz through the Hoffenheim team, and uh, there was Delma Fay to put the ball in the back of the net and already it's Hoffenheim who lead this game. Certainly a great atmosphere. Remember, this is Hoffenheim's first ever home game in the Champions League. So it's a big deal to them that a club that have come from a little village, which is what Hoffenheim is, around about 25,000 inhabitants. Uh, they don't even play in their own town. They play in, in a town which is just close by, but it's not much bigger, actually, than Hoffenheim. We've got 30,000 people packed in here, great atmosphere, and City have been caught napping in the early moments, and they're already a goal down. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Thank you very much, Ian Cheeseman. He'll be there bringing you updates as we get them. Manchester City already goal down. So let's just speak about that. We were, Steve Shanyaski, going to talk to you about Manchester It brings United. a little bit of joy to my <laughs> otherwise broken heart. But Johnny, for yourself, uh, Pep Guardiola made a lot of talk about this. Is they're going to be there? Yeah, the goal down already, beaten by Leon at home. And the best start is it's the Champions League for City. Not the best start, especially when you consider that they've sort of put all their eggs into this basket to try and win the Champions League and maybe they're trying to lose their first three group games and still qualify for this well, just, let's, let's just bring Johnny's uh, background into you a Newcastle fan I am and, and we, it, we've done that before so what was the start of that? I, I don't remember the year oh, oh, I can tell you it's one all so we are going to get Ian Cheeseman back on the phone because Manchester City that's a great game uh, but Johnny you're a Newcastle fan you tell him yeah. about the uh, the season where you lost your opening three opening three matches still qualified for the second round so maybe that's what City are after they need someone like Andy Griffin I think to, I don't to. think Pep Guardiola has ever said that in the dressing room, but maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they do. So it is one all. So we are going to try and get Ian Cheeseman, if uh, our lovely producer James is listening, back on the phone to tell us about that goal uh, by Sergio Aguero. I can tell you a roller coaster start to the show, Steve. Scratching his beard in the, in the what? changing room, going, "What would Andy Griffin do?" <laughs> that is, come I on, wonder. come on. We expected better for a Pep Guardiola impression than that, Steve. Well, I just went for Dracula. <laughs> I think no, no one can really question it because there's not a United fan that's watched that Amazon thing, so no one's going to question it. No, Don't you worry. I bet it's secretly. Uh, John, have you watched the? <laughs> have you watched the Manchester City Amazon thing? No. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't think you said no. <laughs> like that. I, I said to everyone should watch it because you need to know your enemy. But we're we're our own worst enemy at the moment. United. It's just going so bad. I've been away for two weeks. Had a lovely time. Uh, except for when I went to Aberdeen, but the rest of it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so what? a lot of bleakness, a lot of abstract poverty. But apart from that, it was lovely. And then uh, United's been broken since I've gone. It's, it's shocking. I'm absolutely... I, I'm at my lowest uh, place I've ever been with United, I think, in my entire life. It's really, really, that, really is is bad. that bad. What we're going to do is then, obviously, this is the Manchester Football Social. Johnny and Steve will be here for the next hour. Manchester City are 1-1 at Hoffenheim. Mm. We're trying to get Ian Cheeseman on the phone. He's going to come and have a chat. We'll be previewing the United game, talking all things Champions League as well, uh, as bringing Johnny into it, because he's uh, maybe talking about Newcastle United on the weekend. Yeah. Many mm. labelling it. Could be one of Mourinho's final games in charge of Manchester United. Yeah. We're going to go straight to Ian Cheeseman. Ian, you might as well just stay on the phone lines. It's Manchester City 1, Hoffenheim 1. What was the goal like? Trust me, I'd like to stay on the phone line, Joe, and do full match commentary. That's what I love the most. But anyway, can't do that. But what I can tell you is that City got the leveller just seven minutes after Hoffenheim had take the lead. It was Leroy Sane down the left-hand side of the penalty area, accelerating into the space, which is something he loves to do. 
pulled the ball back to Aguero. He's still had a bit of work to do. He had to show some good footwork to squeeze out a right foot, stab into the bottom corner to make it one all. City has settled down now. They just seem to be caught napping by that early goal. But now they're into that rhythm of having all the early domination of, of pace and, and obviously passing the ball around and possession. And the interesting thing is that they're playing with two holding midfielders, which I suspect they'll do at Anfield on Sunday. So they've got Gundogan playing alongside Fernandinho and Laporte playing at left back with Vincent Company and Nicholas Otamendi, the two men in the middle. But I'll tell you what, off and on at this stage, certainly, they're still going to go for it. Big scout for a penalty there. I didn't think it was. And the referee's pointed for a goal kick. So uh, lots of action in these opening 11 minutes. It's now Hoffenheim 1, City 1. Thank you very much, Ian Sheesman. We'll be going to him uh, all the way through the game and for a half-time report, where I'm guessing you could ask him what he's eating in Hoffenheim, Steve. That, what a just, life, that guy. Yeah, he's just getting about with his mates watching Manchester <laughs> City. It's all right. We can now talk about Manchester United. Um, uh, Johnny, you can help me out with this. We can dig, it. We can dig Steve a bit. <laughs> It's been a tough time for you as a United fan, Steve. Well, I've been away. You've uh, been away. And been you know away, what? I always think when you go away... They've broken it again. What? It's the broken United. So I just got distracted. My girlfriend sent me a text about getting Indian tapas tonight. Anyway, <laughs> let's, talk about, right. let's talk about Manchester United. Um, you go I away... I sent you that text. Oh, is that you? <laughs> Code names. <laughs> Whenever you go away, Steve, you come back and you uh, often bring bad news with you. Do you know what? The lowest point for me before was when we lost against Sevilla and I absolutely lost my mind. Um, when we had that radio show after that. But I'm telling you now, this is worse than that. It feels so toxic from the top to the bottom. I don't know what's going... You can blame anyone from upper management down to... Uh, I don't know whoever, whoever's doing the nutrition or what they did. They, they, they look... He seemed to bring up that <coughs> nutritionist, didn't he? A lot in George well, Marie's press conference. didn't they look tired? I tweeted out and it got... The, for some reason, the, the tweet got blocked by... Uh, Twitter because it had a fo- it had footage of the game on it, but they looked absolutely shockingly exhausted. Mm. And, th- and this was this is the one thing that they do in their life is play football. It's it starts with them on the pitch, and then everything cascades down. Everything else is slightly less important than that game that they play in. And they looked absolutely shattered. Some of them players haven't even been regular in the regular first team, and they look absolutely exhausted. I don't know what's going on. I mean, this, I've got so much written in me, little book of thoughts yeah. here, that I don't Johnny, even know where welcome to Welcome to, uh, to um, Steve's book of thoughts. It looks, wants... it looks like a manifesto that you find after, uh, like... It, a disaster. disaster. Yeah. Just, it, it looks like a madman's rage page. <laughs> Johnny, what do you see when you look at United at the minute? Do you, I mean, obviously... I've seen better than Newcastle for a start, <laughs> but I'm not We've, here to complain about that. We've uh, got see, you to come. I know, and that's oh, three cool. three points on the board for United, and it all <laughs> kickstart from there, maybe. Do so you take but, the sides of this Pogba Mourinho? I think a lot of fans are starting to realise that maybe it's both for them. Do you do you have your side of your <laughs> favour on? Um, as a neutral, I think I think I can see Pogba outlasting Mourinho because I was saying to you before that there's two good managers out there that probably know how to do more with Pogba than, than Mourinho does. I got told off for saying get the best out of Pogba before because you don't think there's anything I to personally get out of him. think you get two good games out of him and then he has a break for three. He can't seem to be... Cons- he's the most inconsistent £90 million pound player I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so there's two, from two possibilities. we got one free. Two possibilities <laughs> of, of managers you see, Johnny, who can get the most out of Pogba. I say Co- Conte, yep. who I well, can't remember and I ain't got Wikipedia open in front of me, but I think might have crossed over a little bit with him at Juventus and then there's Zidane who he obviously looks up to as a French midfield legend and he probably wants to emulate some aspects of his career so um, I think those two will be really really positive influences over him mm-hmm. if they want to keep Pogba and don't want to keep Mourinho I think they've invested a lot more in Pogba and they get a lot more on the financial side yep. in terms of now, the publicity and stuff that he brings to the club you, you de- you're so, tapping into what the real issue is with the club it, they, they, they couldn't care less what goes on on the pitch when it comes to the Glazers and, uh, uh, um, what's he called? Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward. Um, they just, it's about profit. It's 100% based around profit. And that's where the issue was where they didn't buy, it's almost the core of it all, where they didn't give get Mourinho those extra players. Now, people are liking, likening the start to this season to Moyes' start to the season, whenever it was. But we've spent three quarters of a billion pounds since then on players it's not like the start of Moyes' season it is way way worse than that because we've got within within boundaries some of the greatest players in the world on that pitch and it just 
it is not happening. And one of the main problems, I think, is Pogba's got a little clique in the gre- in the uh, changing rooms. Definitely got a little... Anyone who does a little magic handshake with him is in his little clique. This is what I've decided. <laughs> Mourinho's not allowed to do one. All the, There's a few players, like Luke Shaw's not got a magic handshake. I've seen a few of them, though. And it's like, <clears throat> he's got this little cliquey thing going on. Uh, Mourinho's sort of dragging players out and embarrassing them in public. This is just not how it operates in 2018. Football doesn't, doesn't work that way anymore. He's, he's like a dinosaur, Mourinho. I do feel sorry for him that he's not like... He didn't have the, the t- defenders that he, he really... We really needed some defenders <laughs> in the transfer window. But everyone turns around and said, well, you got uh, you bought Lindelof and Bailly, but so what? If it was um, Pep Guardioli, would have had... You know, they would have bought in the players and would have sold on. They bought Riyad Mahrez in. They don't really need him. But he's fantastic. He's done great for, for City. They didn't need him, though. Oh, no. So, when you mention, obviously, it starts from the top and the owners of the club, uh, you can look <coughs> look at Mike Ashley for Newcastle as Don't well. look at Mike Ashley. What happens? How do you, how do you then tell the owners that they're the problem? Because they're not just going to move to one side that easily. They've got a product. They're making money. They want to keep it. Something's got to happen. The fans have got to make their voices heard louder. Yeah, yeah. Or we just got to accept it and be on the show and just like, this it, is the problem. There's nothing we can do about is, it. This is this is this is billion pound business. This the only re- the only way you're ever going to get the Glazers to even ha- get an eye to twitch is if the share prices drop. And I'm just it's just not going to happen unless United do so badly that they end up in the EFL. That's the reality. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm tell- don't talk about the <laughs> I'm telling you now. Can you imagine? But, but that, that is the yeah. only way you're going to get the Glazers to flinch. That is the only way the share prices are going to drop. Otherwise, they'll still be in the Premiership and they'll still be in the same situation. And that and that is that. That is that. Even if the even if the fans turn their backs and watch the entire game facing the other way, it still wouldn't affect share prices. It wouldn't. It wouldn't matter to the Glazers or Edward one jot. And that's that. And that is a sad state of affair we are in. I can tell you the other scores. Uh, Juventus 1-0 up against Young Boys. Um, obviously, that's in the same group of Manchester United. Uh, and Steve's got a, ver- a, ver- a ferocious cough. You, are you all right? It's me rage cough. <laughs> it's your ra- rage cough. I'll tell you something else as well. We don't, we don't even have a captain. We don't even really have it. We've, we've dropped Pogba. I've got a theory that, that, that in the old school days, you'd have like key, you'd be frightened to death of your captain. And now we've got a load of players that don't really seem committed. The way they should do it is they should get round to Carrington, they should electrify the fence, put a load of cricket bats, boxing gloves, weaponry, crossbows, anything you need. Uh, my mum's uh, wooden spoon, she used to give me a tap if I was a naughty boy. Mum's wooden spoon in there. And um, they, sh- they should battle it out. Battle Royale style. <laughs> there's to it, find there's out. the next Amazon Prime yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that'd be a great show. And, uh, and, and the winner, when they finally get down to the, maybe the last two or three people, I mean, I, doubt, I, I can't even begin to think it would be. Maybe Valencia looks a bit tasty, I think. But then just when they think they get down to the last person, behind a corrugated iron garage, like on uh, an old computer game, Final Boss, it's Sam Allardyce. <laughs> and not only is it Sam, he's raging because someone's told him that he's just, they've seen you let your dog do a mess on his garden. He's raging. He's absolutely fuming. That is, that is final boss Sam Allardyce, and that's the way you want to decide United's captaincy. Well, I'm sure the they're going to consider guy. that, because we know the United board do listen. Um, <laughs> do you, um, yeah. Johnny, see uh, the captain as an important role? Because this is a theme that I uh, ask people quite a lot. There was talk of the captain's role you know, being lessened in the modern game, you don't really need that Roy Keane. But what do you rate? Do you think you still need that hard captain? I that think can... you still need someone to be the person that goes between the manager and the, the players, but they need to be on good terms with the manager and they need to be on good terms with the players. And is there anyone at United that's on Manchester United that's on good terms with both the players in the dressing room and the management and potentially, probably not? Pogba's on Matic, I would say. That is yeah, about it, Matt. He I'm, loves Matic. And one matter, I think, is on good terms with yeah. with um, with Mourinho, and I think he's probably well respected in the dressing room because he seems like a lovely little man. Yeah, but he doesn't. <laughs> he does seem trouble. like a lovely little man. You it, are correct. He's not first team pick, and that's the other weird issue. He's a great player that should be on every week, and Mourinho's not picking him. I think they've got a lot of you've got a lot of players that sort of play that same position, especially mm. Pogba's. Supposed best position is exactly the same as Matt's supposed best position, and who are you going to 
pick out of those two. Sanchez is um, a re- well, reports. I mean, the Mirror has um, released an article. A new, saying, a new piano album. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't you remember when he when he when he beca- when he signed? Oh yeah, all oh, right. I thought you meant the Mirror. He uh, could play the piano. He's like he can't even play the that's piano. That's the best well, thing mate. he did for Manchester. He can't yeah, even play the piano. Of course, you can't. But they uh, say in their papers that he is unhappy with the decision he made to go to Manchester United and leave Manchester City behind. I mean, there was so many things about the City deal. One, he'd guarantee a Premier League uh, title. Uh, and two, the money wouldn't be half bad. It wasn't like they were paying him 50 grand a week. I'm sure he'd get about 200 grand a week there. And and three, the Champions League is a, is a big opportunity for City this season and another Premier League in the bag. Do you think that we've lost Sanchez as a player now? Is he someone like a, which we've all been there before at United, Di Maria, Dubai is he is he sort of that attacking flair? He's, he's that hasn't clicked with the club. He's one of the worst ever in the history of United's purchases. He can't, yeah. Per, well, per pound, mate, he's like he's the highest played player on that pitch, and he's the worst. He's not even first team pick anymore. I mean, he, he might pick him tonight, but if he if he does pick him, he subs him. What he's got a serious attitude. Now he's go back to the captaincy thing. The captain, have <clears throat> you ever been on a treadmill and you get a bit tired and no. you just think... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on one tonight, I've been ordered to. Okay, well then, <laughs> Tell you'll, me what's gonna happen. you'll be going on the treadmill and say you've got to do 30 minutes. When it gets to 25, you'll be absolutely exhausted and you want it to end. But somehow, you'll put a really heavy tune on, some nasty bit of like Tchaikovsky or whatever you listen to, <laughs> some weird stuff. And then um, <laughs> you stick it on and you dig deep. And you push through and you'll get through to that 30 minutes and then you'll, you'll feel euphoric at the end. A captain, when there's no energy left, when everyone's battered, will drag that team up and say, get back on that pitch, we've got to win this. For all the fans that are sat around that have come from all the little worlds and all the universes to sit there at that one given moment. And it strikes me that United players have forgotten that the fans are there. They forgot that they exist. And that is the whole reason why they're playing on that pitch is because of everyone that's sat there and the, the, the stories behind everyone that has to that has to like save up and buy a season ticket and stuff, I wouldn't even want to know. It's a disgrace the way they're playing at the moment. To be to be quite frank, it's shameful. They're saying they have the sprint statistics on Jamie Carragher's one Monday night football thing, and United's were the lowest by like a, a, an absolute mile. You know, and, and this is a team that was losing the game and weren't even chasing it down. There's a massive attitude problem with every single player on that pitch, and they need to remember why they're there. And it's because of the fans. Forget Mourinho's attitude. Forget Ed Woodward. Forget the Glazers. They're there to win games, and they're there to work hard. And even if they're not winning, I want to see them working hard. And this is always you, been my you, issue. You are right. I can't. It's been my issue. You've with said over the last five minutes. Can't argue. Ever the treadmill you... thing is brilliant. I can understand that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. That's run why you need the captain. It's not to do with liaising with Mourinho and putting up with his nonsense. It's to do with dragging the players up. Stevie Gerrard is a, the best example of a great captain. He would, except for when he uh, said, "Don't slip up," and he slips up. <laughs> that was the greatest moment in football in probably the last ten years. <laughs> but do you know what? The way United are playing, they're not even going to compete with the top seven, let alone the top four. That is this is prediction. how serious we're talking. The problem is. This is how serious the problem is. 